Um, in recent years, uh, I'd say the first eight years or seven years of my tenure as the TAG, we probably did maybe 20 or 30 state missions. In 16 and 17 of winter, we did over 80 missions in one year, state active duty missions. And in the subsequent two years, we've done a whole lot more too, more than we did in the previous six or seven years that I talked about initially. So never lose that feeling or that connection with sense of community. You have to support your community in order for them to support you. You know, if you think about it, why would anybody in DOD want to give this unit a billion dollars worth of equipment? And I'm talking about the J model. Why would they want to do that? Unless you're the best of the best, and you have to be better than the active duty to be able to have them entrust you with a billion dollars worth of equipment. So never lose sight of that. So Glenn, you're gonna assume command here of the uh, Nevada Air National Guard here in a few seconds. And uh, couldn't be more proud of you and Joycey and her family. You know, you're gonna be a rock star here. So never question yourself. That's all I've got. Thank you, General Perks. Ladies and gentlemen, the Alto Wing Commander of the Nevada Air National Guard, Brigadier General Andre Perry. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Good morning, hi Rollers. How's it going? Good morning. Okay, uh, let me just say a couple of things and start the clock now because I told them I got like a minute and 30 seconds, which has never happened before. <laughs> so first of all, I just want to say to Colonel Wade, thank you for uh, what you do to make all this happen because there's a big disruption and it's hard to get the mission done with all this going on and uh, we know that it's you constantly having to adjust to be flexible. So thank you very much for that because this is not easy. And I know it's not, and you've been cooperative, you've been respectful, you've been great. So I just want to say publicly, thank you for doing that. So much appreciated. The other thing I just want to say real quick is uh, going through all these ceremonies and changes of command, it's part of our tradition, but it's important. You have to know there's a reason why people love the military. We are the example. We raise the elevation in terms of letting people know what leadership is all about. So even though sometimes this looks like it throws us off or why do we do it, it's critical. You must understand that these processes and these ceremonies let us know who's in charge, their responsibilities, their roles. So as we go through this today, hold your head up high because we need to have changes of commands. We need to change leadership. There must be upward mobility. There's always a trickle effect when somebody takes a position of leadership. So as you sit back there, there's gonna be a time when a lot of you are gonna be standing up on this stage, getting promoted, getting recognized, getting elevated. That's what we do as a military. So thank you for your patience on that. The second thing I wanna say just real quick is, and, and, and I, I think about this a lot, and you hear me say this statement a lot, to whom much is given, much is required. Not expected, but it's a requirement. And you, when you sit in these positions of leadership and responsibility, you serve the airmen. And, and, and that's not easy to remember on a day-to-day -day basis because personalities, people take over. That's my biggest charge to Colonel, uh, well, General Martel, is be a servant leader. It's about the airmen. It's about, we don't turn wrenches. We don't stand at gates. We're not fixing airplanes. We're not fixing meals. That's the people out here. And we have to remember that, that when you step back and, and, and set your intent, it's for their greater good. I thank you for your family being here because it takes a village to do these jobs. And uh, you might as well get it done. Get shaved off, brother, because you ain't got time to comb it. So uh, you ain't got time to comb it no more. It's over. So get 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 done. But uh, but it's but the last thing I want to say is, you know, in order for me to get where I've gotten in my life, I have to stand on a lot of shoulders. If the Nevada Air National Guard is not successful, I can't even be considered for other opportunities. Do you understand that? It's because of all of you that I get to stand in this position here. And I cannot thank you enough. I know there's been a lot of meetings before the meetings and meetings after the meetings where you're like, give him a drug test. What is he thinking now? <laughs> Something. <laughs> they don't say that about you too. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but, but no, it can't happen without the airmen that we have sitting in this room today. 
because we get looked at on a national level and a state level for the great work that we do. The citizens recognize that this is a best practice. I would even say this is a next practice where people get a chance to look at. One of the things that was my responsibility is to go and wave the flag and say, I challenge you to find a more dedicated, committed group of airmen that are doing great work that can deploy, go down range, do a state mission better than the Nevada Air National Guard. And that's our responsibility. You are the ambassador. You are the champion of the great work that happens here. So I have all of you to thank because I have not really done anything. All I do is to get a chance to take credit for the great work that you do every single day. You do these jobs long enough, you may not get these trophies or you may not get recognitions and they definitely ain't gonna build a statue of you. But let me know, you have to know, what you do matters every single day. And I'm reminded of this, and I'm gonna say this again this morning. And the, and, and the chief tells me, we ain't nothing without our enlisted. So I just want you to know that I thank you for the great work that you do. I thank the officers for your leadership. I thank you for what you've done to make this great organization. Lieutenant Colonel Gunderson is somewhere out there. Thank you for that. Lieutenant Colonel Galley is somewhere out there. Thank you for your work. And is, is Major Franks in here? Yes, sir. Right, yeah. This, this is the new one right here. Sal, let him see you. All right, that's, that's the, he's over virtual test and training center. And, and don't, don't clap too much because he looked better than me. But, uh, <laughs> but, but again, without the leadership, it doesn't happen. So I can't say thank you enough. You know, Battleborn. 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 Right. Thank, we're done. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Jim. Will the rest of the official party join General Barry on the stage? By the direction of the Governor of the State of Nevada, Brigadier General Glenn A. Martell is assigned as Commander, Nevada Air National Guard, effective 7 September 2019. The custodian of the colors, the command chief, passes the colors and all they represent to the outgoing commander, General Berry, for the last time. The outgoing commander then relinquishes his command by passing the colors to the presiding officer, General Burks, who then passes the colors and hence the command to the incoming commander, General Martell. General Martell assumes the duties and responsibilities as the commander of the Nevada Air National Guard. This timeline of process is complete when the incoming commander then returns the colors to the command chief, charging him with maintaining the symbol of command. Uh, General Burks, thank you for your service to our nation and state, especially the last 10 years of our adjutant general. Your strategic thinking, focus on excellence and leadership are greatly appreciated in a position at Nevada for our continued success. General Berry, thank you for your mentorship and support over the last four years. All of our opportunities for improvement have led us to this point, and I look forward to working with you in your new role, keeping Nevada as the vanguard for relevancy and lethality in the Air National Guard. Thank you to my family. It has been months full of change and a challenge. Your support has been incredible and unflinching. Thank you. To uh, my fellow airmen, thank you for your dedication to our country and our great state. It is your desire to serve your fellow citizens that make you one of the less than 1%. That is, that is a distinction that you should be proud of and the one that we must constantly re rededicate ourselves to, maintaining a standard of excellence that maintains our relevancy, increases our lethality, and keeps us ahead of our adversaries in a never-changing environment. As we enter this next chapter of the Nevada Air National Guard's existence, we recognize that we stand on the shoulders of the airmen that came before us, setting the stage for our success today. While we recognize the dedication, sacrifice, and accomplishments of our predecessors, we will maintain our focus on the future and the challenges and opportunities it brings. Today, we accept the challenges that our adversaries have presented us. We accept them knowing what they are, opportunities for Nevada to expand our presence, improve our capabilities, and protect our way of life. As we face our future with our eyes wide open, we will act with integrity, take pride in our service, and operate with excellence. In order to effectively apply our resources, we will continue our drive of 71 years of innovation, leading the mission by achieving our aspirations. In addition, we will continue to focus on our five strategic priorities. Readiness, understanding our role in total force, <coughs> and continuing to seek out and train to missions that align with the Air Force, align with the Air Force and DOD Joint Force requirements. Care for our members and families. Nevada will continue to improve our programs of support that ensure our members' success. 
especially a lot of stress going on out there, so please take care of our airmen. Diversity and inclusion. The Nevada Air Guard must represent the citizens it serves and actively seek new ideas in order to maintain its current advantages. Community, the very reason for our existence. General Burke alluded to this in his comments. Nevada will remain trained and ready to support our state and nation when needed to step forward when others cannot or are unwilling. And last but certainly not least, force development. Nevada's airmen must be trained, experienced, and capable of bringing the necessary technology and tools to the fight. In order to maintain our professional edge, we will be proactive with talent management. We are currently in the midst of updating the Nevada Air National Guard strategic plan. The current plan set Nevada on a course to reestablish our foundation and refocus our energies on core skill sets and with hard work, focus, and a desire to improve, it succeeded. The new and improved version has been drafted with input from senior leadership, engagement with NGB, and members of the Nevada National Guard at all levels. It will be complete by the end of the year and will be the focus of our 2020 State of the State presentation to NGB in February. And will be our guidebook, our North Star, if you will, as we launch from our current foundation into the challenging future that is in front of us. This future includes expanded and new missions for the airlift wing, new missions for the 232nd, growth and new missions for the Intel Squadron, a brand new mission set centered around the new virtual test and training center standing up at Nellis, and an expanding partnership in the Indo-PACOM. While all of these initiatives have been in the works for a while, to use a sports analogy, now is the time to play through the fourth quarter and close the deal. This will take all of our focused efforts expanding and securing Nevada's future, maintaining our current mission capabilities, and being ready in case of a homeland event. Nevada is moving with confidence into the future to ensure relevancy for the long term. Again, we do not accept these challenges because we have to. We accept them because we choose to. We demand it of ourselves, excellence in all we do. We owe it to our fellow airmen. Our elected representatives and the citizens we serve, deserve, we serve deserve nothing less than excellence. It is crucial to the future of our profession, the Nevada Air National Guard, and our way of life. Excellence, Nevada style. Battle born. Battle Thank you.